fourth graders, welcome to week 11, lesson two. This math lesson is for schools who are using the Bridges and Mathematics program. Today, we will be multiplying whole numbers by two digit factors. Are you ready to do some math learning? Let's get started. Today, we will multiply by a two digit factor using a variety of strategies to solve real world problems. Let's break down our objective. We will be multiplying by two digit factors. We will be multiplying two digit whole numbers such as 45 times 72. We will be using a variety of strategies to solve these multiplication problems, including area models, partial products, and the standard algorithm. Think about it, same but different. Examine the pictures below. What is the same? What is different? You might have said that the two pictures are the same because they both represent the same capacity. Four quarts is the same as one gallon. You may have also said that both pictures represent an amount of milk. You might have said that the two pictures are different because the containers of milk are different sizes. Each quart contains one fourth of a gallon of milk. The gallon contains four quarts of milk. Learn about it. Let's multiply by two digit factors. Earlier this week, you reviewed strategies for multiplying whole numbers by one digit factors. In this video, we will review three strategies for multiplying whole numbers by two digit factors. Those strategies are using an area model, partial products, and the standard algorithm. Let's use each of those strategies to determine the product of 28 times 56. First, Let's estimate the product of 28 times 56. This will help us determine if our answer is reasonable once we solve. To estimate the product, we can round one or both factors to create a similar problem that is easier to solve mentally. Let's round 28, since 28 is not a number that is easy to multiply mentally. To the nearest 10, we can round 28 to 30. 56 is also difficult to multiply mentally, so let's round 56 as well. To the nearest 10, we can round 56 to 60. Our estimated problem is 30 times 60, which equals 1,800. Therefore, our real product should be close to 1,800. That sign means approximately. Because we rounded both 28 and 56 up to the nearest 10, our estimation is an overestimate. The exact answer should be close to, but less than, 1,800. Now, let's determine the exact product of 28 and 56. Let's begin by using an area model to solve. First, let's draw our area model. Because both factors are two digit numbers, our area model will have two rows and two columns. Note that because the value of the tens is greater than the value of the ones, in a true area model, the columns and rows would not be equally sized. However, because it would be difficult to draw an area model true to size in this space, our area model will have equally sized rows and columns. Let's write 28 in expanded form. We will write each value in 28 above the columns in the area model. 28 is equal to 20 and 8. Now, let's write each value in 56 next to the rows in the area model. 56 is equal to 50 and 6. Note that our second factor, 56, is color coded. The tens value, 50, is purple, and the ones value, 6, is blue. Now it's time to multiply. Let's begin by multiplying 28 by 50. 20 times 50 equals 1,000. 8 times 50 equals 400. Those two values together are equivalent to 28 times 50. Now let's multiply 28 times 6. 20 times 6 equals 120. 8 times 6 equals 48. Those two values in blue are equivalent to 28 times 6. Now, let's add those partial products together. The top two values represent 28 times 50, and the bottom two values represent 28 times 6. If we add all four values together, we will record a 0 in the 1's place, a 6 in the 10's place, a 5 in the 100's place, and a 1 in the 1000's place. The product of 28 times 56 is 1,568. 
Now, let's solve the same problem, 28 times 56, using partial products. When using partial products, we can line up the digits according to place value. Again, we have color-coded the digits in 56. The tens place is purple, and the ones place is blue. Let's multiply 28 by 6 first. We will begin by multiplying 8 times 6. 8 times 6 equals 48. We will record that partial product under the problem, being sure to line up the digits according to place value. Next, let's multiply 20 times 6. We are multiplying by 20 and not by 2 because this 2 is in the tens place, and so it has a value of 20. 20 times 6 equals 120. We will write 120 underneath 48. Next, we will multiply 28 by 50. First, let's multiply 8 by 50. We are multiplying by 50 and not by 5 because the 5 is in the tens place, so it has a value of 50. 8 times 50 equals 400. Finally, we will multiply the two tens places together. 20 times 50 equals 1,000. The order of the partial products does not matter as long as you are multiplying the correct numbers together. Now, we will add up our partial products. These are the same partial products that we found in our area model. 48 plus 120 plus 400 plus 1,000 equals 1,568. That is our product again. Finally, let's solve 28 times 56 using the standard algorithm. The multiplication standard algorithm for two-digit numbers is a strategy that you will master in fifth grade, so here we will preview this strategy. This multiplication strategy is not a requirement for fourth graders. Just like when using partial products, we can line up the digits according to place value. Again, we have color-coded each place value in 56. With the standard algorithm, we begin with the ones place. We will multiply 28 by 6 in parts, starting with 8 times 6. 8 times 6 equals 48. We will record an 8 in the ones place and regroup the four tens to the tens place. Next, we will multiply 20 by 6, which equals 120. Then, add the four tens that were regrouped. 120 plus 40 equals 160, or 16 tens. We will record a 1 in the hundreds place and a 6 in the tens place to represent 16 tens. 28 times 6 equals 168. Now, we must multiply 28 by 50. We will cross out the four tens that were regrouped since we will now be multiplying by a different number, by 50 instead of by 6. Because we are multiplying by 50, we must annex a zero in the ones place of our second product to accurately reflect that we are multiplying by five tens and not by five ones. Let's begin by multiplying eight by 50. Eight times five tens equals 40 tens. We will record a zero in the tens place and regroup the four hundreds. Note that although we are regrouping the four hundreds above the two, which is in the tens place, our next place value to record in our product will be in the hundreds place, since we annexed this zero in the ones place. Finally, we will multiply 20 by 50, or two tens by five tens. That equals 1,000, or 10 hundreds. Then, we will add the four hundreds that were regrouped. 1,000 plus 400 equals 1,400, or 14 hundreds. We will record a one in the thousands place and a four in the hundreds place to represent 14 hundreds. Finally, we will add the two partial products together. The sum of 28 times 6 and 28 times 50 equals the product of 28 times 56. 168 plus 1,400 equals 1,568. Therefore, 28 times 56 equals 1,568. Let's return to our estimation. We estimated that our product would be close to 1,800, but would be less than 1,800. Our product is 1,568. This is close to, but less than, 1,800. Our product is reasonable. Finally, let's look at all three strategies together. You can see the similarities between all three methods when they are laid out together. The area model strategy and the partial product strategy both show the same partial products, 1,000, 400, 120, and 8, and 48. 
The algorithm actually also uses the same partial products, but the two tens products are combined, and so are the two ones products. Note that the partial products 120 and 48 and to equal 168, and the partial products 1,000 and 400 add to equal 1,400. Again, we focused more on area models and partial products in fourth grade, and focused more on the standard algorithm for two-digit multiplication in fifth grade. Whichever strategy you prefer, you will arrive at the same product. In this case, all three strategies produce the product 1,568. Try it. Now it's your turn to practice multiplying by two-digit factors. Log on to Schoology to complete the Try It assignment that your teacher pushed out on two-digit multiplication. Then, show what you know about multiplying by two-digit factors by logging on to Schoology and completing your Show What You Know assignment that your teacher pushed out as an assessment. Make sure you submit this to your teacher. Well, fourth graders, it's been a blast hanging out with you and working on two-digit multiplication. Until next time, have a great day.